time for jumping and jumping jacks! Oh, Mr. Natsume, I'm so pleased for you. A locum student, Mr. Narohodo Esquire, and non locum judicial assistant, Mr. Mikotopa Esquire S. Now, finally, at long last, there can be proof. Proof that I'm innocent and proof that my tea is innocent. Ah, good morning, my dear fellows. Oh, Herlock Sholmes! May you drink my tap of tea and fall forever silent. I thought the tea was innocent. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, you came! How wonderful! And this time, before the trial ended. Please save your derision. I know what you're all thinking. Good morning, he says, when it's very nearly time for luncheon. Your scorn is written clearly across your faces. Nobody said or thought anything of the sort. I did. <laughs> the truth is, I was determined that today would be the day. As sleep seduced me last night, I thought. Tomorrow for once I shall not oversleep. I'll rise early and be present in court to support my companions. Such spirited determination has a beauty all of its own, does it not? Oh yes! And then I began to muse on the subject. Why do people oversleep, I queried. Why time after time do they make the same foolish blunder? And the answer came to me at once. It's so delightfully simple. People oversleep because they sleep. Well, is that not an astute insight into the matter? <laughs> no. Oh yes. <laughs> Upon which realization I attempted an experiment. I didn't sleep a wink all night. And the results? By first light, I was exhausted and began to be assailed by fits of drowsiness. Shocking. And so, the conclusion of last night's experiment is this. A good night's sleep is quite simply essential. Yes, I think most of us probably knew that already. What others presuppose, I prove by experimentation that my dear fellow is the scientific method. Ah yes, and one more thing. Do you remember this? Ah. Uh. Yes, of course. It's the poison that Miss Green was about to drink. Yesterday. Oh, you didn't manage to... It was a laborious task as the bottle was near empty, but such inconveniences do not hinder Sholmes. I managed to confirm that it contains Strike 9. Strike 9. <laughs> or whatever this is pronounced. So I was right. Perhaps, though of course, such circumstantial evidence doesn't prove Miss Green's guilt. I shall leave the bottle in your care now, but licking the inside of the neck is not recommended. Slow acting poison strike Neen. Uh, um, who's that? Uh, could I have a word? Oh, ooh! Gregson? Gregson, how good of you to come! Forget it, excuse me. What? Wait a minute, is Inspector. I uh, don't wish to make a nuisance of myself. From the look on your face, I'd say it's someone else who you think is making a nuisance of himself. My dear Inspector, please speak freely. Pretend that I'm not here. <laughs> how do you... How do you suppose he can speak to you if he pretends that you're not there? Believe me, if I could do that, life would be a whole lot simpler for me. Do you have the results, Inspector? Of the investigation of Mr. Shamsby's room? Not yet. Shouldn't be long now, though. No, I'm here about something else. Uh, that dead convict, actually. Oh. Do you mean the man from this newspaper article we discovered yesterday? A man by the name of... Ah, yes, Selden. I went through the archives of the yard and dug out the fellow's file. There's something in there that... Well, it caught my eye. Something caught your eye? What, Inspector, what? I've copied out the relevant parts for you so you can read it for yourselves. Thank you. The Capital Offender's File. These documents include the details that were in the newspaper cutting we found in Mr. Shamsby's room. I rearrange everything in the court record so we don't have duplicate information. Oh, thank you, Susato. 
Why are you giving us a copy of this important file though? Let's have a look at these important files and the bottle. It does not have a label. Huh? What is this? There's nothing here, right? So this is the poison we've been hearing so much about. Strike... There are a few remnants on the bottom of the bottle here, look. You must be tempted to try it. Of course not, as long as we don't lose this trial. Oh ho ho! No, even if we lose the trial... No, we mustn't lose the trial in the first place, Mr. Narodo. Make your mind up, Sasato-san. Okay. Investigative findings related to Selden. 18 counts of burglary, 6 counts of suspected murder, died of natural causes whilst well in prison. His final moments witnessed only by his cellmate. The estimated 1,000 pounds worth of loot he stole remains unrecovered. Condemned criminal dies of natural causes in prison. Manchester Strangeways Prison announced the death of convicted murderer and burglar Selden by natural causes in the early hours this morning. He had been suffering with fever since the end of October. Alerted by the shouts of his fellow cellmate, medical staff arrived to find him already dead before his capital punishment could be carried out. Hmm. Well, you're the ones who turned up the clue in the first place, aren't you? I'm just making sure things get handled in the proper fashion. Oh, Scotland Yard's workings are so wonderful. Indeed, my dear fellows, and this inspector here is a shining diamond in its crown. A shining diamond? In the rough, maybe. Look, I just don't want to be beholden to a lawyer, that's all. Come on, don't be so tsundere. Counsel for the defendant, and the defendant. Good proceedings about to resume. Make your way into the courtroom at once. Well, I shall leave it. I shall leave you then. I'll be listening with interest from the public gallery. Not nodding off at all, certainly not. Thank you, Mr. Sholmes. I'm rather tired of seeing Mr. Moustache in floods of tears personally, so the best of luck to you. Welcome to the Mr. Naruhudo Esquire. Yes, Mr. Natsume. It's, it, it's time, isn't it? Yes, this is it. Miss Olive Green and Mr. William Shamspear. This is going to be the final battle. I won't really have saved Sosuke-san until I've exposed the whole truth of everything that's been going on. But it's all coming to a head now. You can do it, Yonosuke. You have to! In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session again now. Before the recess, we heard a most startling accusation from the defense, namely, that the victim of the case we heard only a few days ago is the true perpetrator of this incident. A reckless, rash and prejudiced charge of wrongdoing, in my opinion, my lord. However... The prosecution has tried to extend every courtesy to this amateur newcomer from dubious eastern shores. Thank you. For that backhanded consideration. A rather cold assessment from the honorable British prosecutor, I must say. So, Lord Van Zeeks, is the new witness present and ready to take the stand? Ready and waiting in the witness's antechamber, my lord. Very well, bailiff, bring the witnesses in. Witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court, please. William Shamsby, my liege. For my occupation, I can say only... That I be a tragic victim, 
to be pitied. Currently unemployed, in other words. I'm Olive Green. I'm a fledgling artist. Oh, well, no. Uh, not a fledgling, really. A hopeless failure who's too weak spirited to admit she has no talent, I suppose. Also currently unemployed, in other words. What a coterie. Mr. Shamspear. My lord, I am thy humble servant. I'm afraid that you are no longer merely the victim in this affair. The possibility has been raised that you are in fact the assailant intent on taking the life of a fellow lodger. The part you have played in this whole business will be thoroughly scrutinized, I assure you. I have it for naught else, my lord. And Miss Green? Yes? You are aware of the reason you have been summoned to this courtroom today, I presume? Yes, the officer did explain. He said I poisoned this ridiculous buffoon. And do you accept the charge, Miss Green? I don't know anything about any poisoning. And I don't know anything about this man. Come, lady, die to live. Verily, I know not thy prickly pea pigmented personage. Pea pigmented? Okay. Very well, let us proceed with the matter at hand. That being to ascertain whether or not Miss Green has any involvement in this affair. It's all very strange. Very strange indeed. Why would you suspect me? I barely ever go to the East End anyway. It so happens that I passed by that neighborhood six days ago, that's all. And on the night that this man was poisoned, I was still in the hospital, fighting for my life. Yes, I've been unfortunately caught up in the incident on the street, outside the Garadab household. An incident that rendered you unconscious for some three days. I was struck in the middle of my back by a knife, through no fault of my own, and now I'm under suspicion? What other irrelevant things might I be suspected of? It's all very disturbing. Your energies may be better spent worrying about random knife attacks, I feel, Miss Green. At this point in time, all that appears to connect you with Mr. Shamspear's lodgings is the Briar Road incident of six days ago. That's why... We would like you to testify formally now about exactly what happened. Oh no! The incident six days ago? You mean you want me to relive that awful accident? Unfortunately, yes. Please tell the court what happened that day. And of course, we would be interested to hear from you about your movements that day too, Mr. Shamspear. Eh? But, but what happened six days ago has nothing to do with me being poisoned. Let us proceed then. The witnesses will present their formal testimony to the court. On the subject of the incident that took place on Briar Road the evening of the 17th of February. It was six days ago at about 5 p.m. I was walking along in the snow when I was suddenly stabbed in the back. Coincidentally, it happened to be just outside the house where the men, in this case, have their lodging. I was at the tavern on the eve of which thou speakst, for I had bespoke my sp supper. It was the first time I'd been in the area. I had a little matter to attend to, that's all. Anyway, I was admitted straight to hospital, so I knew nothing about all of this business. That was a very short testimony. Yes, a second incident inside a week at what I believe to be aptly described as the haunted lodgings. One can only presume this is a most unfortunate coincidence. Hold on a minute. Do I have the contents of the letter as evidence? Miss Green's letter. No, I do not. Meanwhile, you say you were not in your room, Mr. Shamspear. It was the following morn when I did awaken that I learned of the dire events. 
Mary, what a commotion do the officers of law make on the floor above mine. When Sosuke-san was arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. I suspect that there's nothing connecting these two witnesses but happenstance. It's true, it does seem as though they are unrelated at first glance. But I'm not so sure. There's something lurking in the shadows here, I feel certain of it. And this is my own one and only chance to expose it. Kozu, you may now cross-examine these two witnesses. Yes, my lord. the snow, that's right, coincidentally, it happened to be just outside the house. You were at the tavern. The slug and the salad tavern? You had a matter to attend to, like you wanted to go to the slug and the salad as well. Okay, where were you exactly? In which tavern? Hold it! A tavern, you say? Which one? Towards the slug and salad where I did tarry. There's a jewel in the east end. And a little unexpected, I feel. Hmm? What do you mean, Lord Van Zix? The slug and salad offers unusually fine dining, for the locality at least. Not an establishment you'd expect to be patronized by a man with not even a crumb of bread in his room. Ah! It's true, the menu lists premium crusts of bread and glasses of water in different levels of cloudiness. Wait, where did you get this information? Do you have internet? This can't be in the encyclopedia that you carry. I would have expected Grub's Grubbery in the local vicinity to be more appropriate for your meats. Watery soup and mushy peas, or rather soupy water and pea-like mush. All equally appetizing. I, I just wanted to try some water in a different pub for once. What's wrong with that? How different can water really be? Uh, perhaps there's a more plausible explanation. A specific reason why he had to go to that particular establishment. Agreed. The fact that on that day of all days, he dined at a place he wouldn't normally, it does stand out. So Mr. Shamsby's own actions on the day of the incident six days ago were slightly suspicious. I wonder if we have some evidence that can explain those actions. I don't think so at the moment. Not at the moment. I wish we did, but sadly I can't think of anything at the moment. If we find a clue that could explain why Mr. Shamsby went there, we must present it. Yes, absolutely. If that is all on this matter, Kosa, I would ask Miss Green to reiterate her next statement. And what matter did you have to attend to? Hold it! What little matter, Miss Green? Please elaborate. It was nothing really. It's not worth mentioning. If you remember, you mentioned it to us yesterday at the hospital. Ah. Uh. It was related to the card you were holding. Miss Green. What was that? She clearly had just hit something behind her back. From memory, I believe the card contained a note that read, I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. What? Oh, what does that matter? Well, this has nothing to do with Duncan. Uh huh. Excuse me.
Mr. Shamspear, do you have something to share with the court? To be or not to be? That is the question. Ah, pray forgive me. The Greek bard's words springeth from within me with ne'er a thought. Don't tell me. It's because you're possessed by Shakespeare's spirit, right? Hearing Miss Green's words a moment ago seemed to make you think of something. Something of relevance, perhaps? Eh, um, well, uh, nay, nay, sire, t'was nothing at all. Presumably you know the name, though, Mr. Duncan Ross, I mean. After all, you were both lodgers in the same house. I, I, I would it were so, but sadly nay. Lodging be a lonely occupation, sire. My lodging fellows be rarely known to me. So you haven't heard of him, even though he passed away in the room just one floor above yours? Eh. Mm, I'm Miss Green. Me, my lord? Have I done something wrong? The card that was mentioned before containing the note, do you have it upon your person? I do, yes, but I don't need it anymore. In fact, I should throw it away, really. Before you dispose of it, the court will take it as evidence, please. Hmm. Of course, that's what links Mr. Shamspear and Miss Green. It's Duncan Ross. Now continue, please, Miss Green. Mm, so we press on Shamspear again. Hold it! And present some evidence, shall we? It wasn't a coincidence. So, did Shamspear really did send the letter after all? I still don't know why the envelope, like the torn off envelope, was. How, why did we find it in his room? Mr. Shamspear? Y yes, sire? On the day in question, is it not the case that you visited the Slug and Sell It, a place you don't normally patronize, for a very particular reason? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Pray, if thou hast some purpose, speakst. Very well, I will present the court with evidence. Evidence that explains why you had to be at the Slug and Sell It that day, namely... You sent the letter, didn't you? Oh, we have to examine it. The envelope has been ripped open rather carelessly, hasn't it? Miss Green strikes me as the type to open correspondence more neatly than that. Ah. What is it? The way the envelope is torn, I'm almost sure I've seen the, that exact same shape somewhere else. Oh, you don't mean... What do you think of this piece of evidence, Mr. Nadodo? Exactly, that's it. Try to match them up. Oh. Yes, match them up. Yeah. They go together perfectly. This torn off end of the envelope clearly belongs with this card. So, wait a minute. Did Mr. Shamspear intercept the letter somehow and open it beforehand? Hmm. Or did he really send the letter? Why would he... tore off his own envelope? If he wrote this letter himself. Take that! I believe this card reveals the answer. Good lord, Miss Green's card, you mean? That's right, my lord. It reads... I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the slug and sell it on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on 17. Don't tell anybody else about this letter or the meeting. It is a matter of utmost importance. Mr. Shamspear, your actions on the afternoon of Miss Green's stabbing are exactly as described in this note. 
Hold on. Is it not addressed to the screen? Can I read this again? Hold on. Is it not addressed to the screen? Huh. Maybe he got the letter first. Or something, I don't know. Ah. Uh. Personally, I find it hard to believe that's a coincidence. Don't you, Mr. Shamspear? Um, well... Um, excuse me? How can I say something? Yes, Miss Green? That card was delivered to me. It doesn't have anything to do with this odd man, does it? Well, well, you'd think so, yes, but it's hard to believe it's Mali. My lord, may I? M may you what, Miss Green? I'd like to make something very clear about that card. Very well then, you may amend your testimony to include details about the note. This note was delivered to me at my address. It's nothing to do with the odd man next to me here. Hmm. Hold it! I think you said that you received it the day before the incident, didn't you? Yes, that's right. There appears to be no indication of the sender's name or address on the envelope. It was in my letterbox and that's all I know, I'm afraid. I've no idea who sent it. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Who is this Duncan Ross, please? A friend of mine. He attended the same art school as I do. He... He passed away in a tragic accident a month ago now, though. I wasn't sure what to make of that note, to be honest, but in the end, I decided to go. So you found out what the information was? Oh, of course I didn't. I'm not thinking straight. Worse, on her way there, she was stabbed in the back. As my learned friend hopefully remembers. Uh, uh, yes, of course. She never made it to the meeting. Oh, Mr. Naruto, you pursued Mr. Shamsby wonderfully there. It's worked out well, hasn't it? We have a new clue at last. Alright, now I need to pull off a really insightful objection somewhere. Well... As you've managed to expose this promising new angle, I wonder if you should perhaps try to develop that. Ah, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> and chilling out objections isn't necessarily the best way to do that, I suppose. I wanna do we play Sasato-san as a lawyer in the future? I hope so. And maybe Ryunosuke Naruhodo can be her assistant for once. It's nothing to do with the odd man next to me. Can we present this envelope? Objection! The day before the incident, exactly one week ago now, this note was delivered to your address. And upon carrying out the instructions in the note, you found yourself in hospital. Yes, I did. It's terrible everything that's happened to me. Yes, it is terrible. If it's all true, that is. Huh. Oh. Are we saying she broke into Mr. Shamspear's home? Apartment and stole the envelope? What do you mean? Miss Green, have a look at this, please. It's the torn off end of an envelope. Oh, is it? And it so happens that it fits together perfectly with the envelope of the note you received. Uh, wh where did you find that? In Mr. Shamspear's room. Eh, in, in my room. Mr. Shamspear, do you perhaps remember this note from somewhere? Uh, well... Your actions that afternoon follow the instructions in the note to the letter. Come to the slug and sell it on Briar Road at 5pm on the 17th 
And so that's exactly where you went. Ah. Let me ask you again, Mr. Shamspear. You already knew about this note, didn't you? And you, Miss Green? Uh, what did I do? As this torn off end of the envelope proves, the note was originally in Mr. Shamspear's room. So how is it that it came to be in your possession? I, I don't have the first idea. I'm just a fledgling artist after all. There is only one explanation. You broke into Mr. Shamspear's room and stole it. Uh, you did what? Sorry, thou has what? You broke, I mean, thou were in my room? <laughs> He's breaking apart. What on earth do you want with me? <laughs> She's decidedly not looking in his direction. It would seem that both witnesses need to testify again. <laughs> oh my goodness, what is happening here? Miss Green. Yes? Was you have the court's sympathy, I'm sure, for the suffering you have endured in recent events. Anyone found to be giving false testimony in a court of law will be duly punished. Please bear that in mind. Yes, I know. Very well then, witnesses, you will give formal testimony again now. On the subject of this curious anomaly regarding the note Miss Green claims to have received. <laughs> 